So welcome again to those tuning into our Be Equipped series. We've been doing a series of videos uh, and interviews uh, just to equip the church. Um, and uh, this morning we're going to be speaking about basically an issue of leadership, Andrew. And I know um, that, uh, well, maybe before I launch into that, I should maybe introduce you. This is Andrew yeah. and uh, co-hosting with me is Adam Hellyer. And uh, I know this topic is something which you are very passionate about and you speak about a lot. Um, and it's the topic of how do we as leaders, especially leaders of churches, um, uh, lead in such a way that the Holy Spirit is leading our church mm. through us. Um, so maybe before we, we, we launch into that topic, um, if we have to start with the Bible and a biblical basis for uh, a spirit-led church, where would we go? Where do we start? Oh, that's great. Uh, good question. You know, I think one of the things we've got to realize is the church is called a body, uh, very much like you're a body, and it's made up of many parts, just mm. like you and I are made up of many parts. And a Christian is supposed to be somebody who is led by the Spirit of God. I think it's Romans chapter 8 speaks about those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And so a true Christian is going to be led by the Spirit. And Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and they'll follow me. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a real sense that as a Christian, as I wake up, my day is supposed to be consist around hearing God's voice. In fact, he said when he was walking on the earth, with the disciples physically on the earth, he literally mm. said, it's better that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. Yeah. But when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and he will lead you and guide you into the truth. Yeah. And so there's a real sense that we have, like Jesus was on the earth, we have the Holy Spirit speaking to us as individuals to lead us and guide us and teach us the ways of the Lord. But likewise, the church is supposed to have Jesus as his head and is mm. supposed to be connected to Jesus yeah. at its head. And as a head, the head decides what the body is going to do. Mm. And if the Holy Spirit is going to take from Jesus and make known what he has to us, then as leaders, our job is to... Mm. Keep in step with the Spirit because that shows that the church belongs to God because the Spirit leads us and guides us into what yeah. God wants. And so, if, you know, church ultimately, leadership in the church, the primary role of a good leader is to wait on the Lord, to hear what the Lord wants to say, and then take the church where the Lord is going. Yeah. So Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. And so there's a definite sense that there needs mm, to be the leadership yeah. of Jesus in our lives so that we can take the church where Jesus wants to go. Is it enough? I'm um, just thinking from the point of view of someone who maybe doesn't have the Holy Spirit baptism like mm. some of us have experienced. Uh, is it enough to say, but I do follow Christ because I read the Bible. I know how Christ lived. Mm. So I, I do follow him. Mm. Is it enough? Or is there, are we talking something beyond that? You know, when Jesus left, he, he, he said this, and I don't ever want to undermine the scriptures. We never go beyond mm. the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, and you know, But at the end of the day, the scripture is there and we can learn about God and his ways from the scripture. But what is God saying to me right now? Right. <laughs> and that's a different story. You know, yeah. Abraham, the father of our faith, heard the voice of God. He knew God. He, um, There was intimacy. There was fellowship. Um, and so likewise, as Christians, we must come to that place of intimacy and fellowship. And so we need to be hearing the voice of God. Yeah. I would say without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's very difficult. It's possible because mm. God speaks even to heathen at times. So yeah. certainly those that are his who are not filled with the Spirit might be able to hear his voice. But, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is one of the great gifts that God gives yeah. where we would be immersed in him and he in us and then he would lead us and guide us. So I, yeah. I think even in the book of Acts, for a deacon in the church, they had to be full of the Holy Spirit sure. and yeah. wisdom. And so for me, a church leader that is not filled with the Holy Spirit, I don't think should be leading because he's going to ultimately lead on pragmatism and even the wisdom of the word of God rather than the living yeah. word of God that's leading the church. Yeah. yeah. So if someone had to agree with you and say, okay, I, I see in scripture mm -hmm. that, you know, we should be spirit led. Um, what, what, what does it look like when the church is not spirit led? If you could just paint the picture, because I mean, clearly this is something that not every church is actually getting right. Yeah, I think very few are getting right, to be honest. Most churches, it depends what school of theology they're yeah. from. You know, your traditional churches that are not believing in the modern day gifts of the Spirit or the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit rather. 
would often end up being um, sp- uh, scripture based or sc- scripture led churches. Mm. So they go through the Bible over a period of your life. You'll probably go through the Bible once at least in a church and they'll go through systematically some scripture yeah. and just work it through. And what does that mean? And how does that apply? And uh, in some ways, that's not what Jesus said. He left us. He said, mm. when I go, he didn't say he's going to leave us the letter. Yeah. So he's going to leave us a spirit. Mm. And, yeah. and so we need to be spirit led. Um, in fact, the early church didn't even have the letters we have. They they literally had to depend upon hearing the voice of God. And you see that right through the book of Acts. That's an interesting, it's an interesting yeah. observation, right actually. They the, didn't yeah. even have a yeah. New Testament. No. And through the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit said, set apart from me Paul and Barnabas for the work. You know, yeah. there's a definite sense of the Lord leading. He's still there. He's not mm. just sitting in heaven. You know, I'm going to leave a book with you and I'll work yeah. it out for yourselves. I am with you, he said, mm. to the very end of the age. Mm. And so there's a there's a working it out with the, with the Lord that I think is so, so key for uh, any church leadership to be moving forward. And yeah. if not, you end up with, you know, this, let's just go through the Bible. And it forces people, it, it creates a people that have got very big heads and understanding mm. about the ways and the nuances of God. Yeah. But they're not going anywhere together. There's no mm. sense of mission. And yeah. what's Jesus saying to me now? So the, the way that it often works out practically when churches speak about leadership, and this is a false dichotomy, but it seems to be a thing that you get churches which pride themselves on being spirit-led on the one hand, and on the other hand, you have people that pride themselves of being sola scripture. You know, we men of the, we, we, we people of the word, and mm. um, mm. and so I- anything other than sola scripture is weird and fringe mm. and, and, and unbiblical. And so, but... But speaking to that, I mean, is it as simple as that? You know, I, can I jump in even a bit before that? Yeah. I think one of the things that the charismatic church has done is in its desire to be successful, you've ended up with uh, creative methods, yeah. pragmatic tools, yeah. leadership right. teams very much sit around dream teaming what could be. Mm. They'll set the course for the church over the next period of time mm. and then, you know, market it really well. Like program, program, program driven. Program, program driven. And again, yeah. that's dangerous because now man is effectively building the church. Mm. Again, using biblical principles. But I, I think for me, we end up back in Genesis. You'll be like God. Yeah. Remember the fall of man. You'll be like God, yeah. knowing yeah. good from evil was the temptation that Satan offered. And so now we start to build the church without Jesus. Mm. And the most terrible picture I can see is a church in the book of Revelation where Jesus is, speaks to a church and he says, yeah. here I am. I'm standing outside knocking. Mm. I want to come in. Mm. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Yeah. And so he is the head of the church. Yeah. And either we go where he goes or we go where we go and he doesn't follow. My servant Jesus yeah. said must be where I am. And so I think churches need to come back to that place where they are being led by God or you go left, he goes right. And ultimately, mm. you're not going to be built by the Lord in that sense. Yeah. Coming back to your question. We, yeah, I think what you've raised like a, there's, there's like spirit-led churches, yeah. program-led right. pro, pro, program yeah, churches, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and and scripture-led yes. churches. Yes. So uh, th- that's a whole different, um, totally. I suppose, error that you could mm. fall into very easily and possibly quite a common error to yeah. fall into. But uh, I know you've once mentioned an analogy of a GPS when it comes to spirit mm. and mm. Uh, and word. Do you want to maybe elaborate on yeah, that here? Great. You know, again, you get guys that are so mystical and so the spirit led me to say this and yeah. they just ignore the scriptures. And mm. we cannot ignore the scriptures. The Bible says to not go beyond what's written. Mm. And in fact, the Bible says every matter that we do must be established by at least two more witnesses scripturally. Yeah. So yeah. there's a principle that as leaders, we must make sure we never take the people outside of the word of God. The word of God is a broad place, though. You look at all those letters and the things yeah. that are written. There's quite broad boundaries in terms of what are actually we needing right now. And so one of the things that we need to do is we need to realize we can't go outside of Scripture. Yeah. But where am I right now? You know, What is God mm. saying to me specifically? And I think for me, maybe the Scripture for me is like a map. We, we're living in the city of Cape Town right now. It's a big city. I cannot yeah. go outside of the city. Yeah. If I go outside of the city, outside of the bounds of Scripture, I'm, I'm in error. Hmm. But within the bounds of that city, what does the Lord saying to me now? Where am I? Yeah. And what does yeah. he want me to go? Where does he want me to do? And that's where the Spirit comes in. It's like a GPS. Mm. This is where you are. Yeah. This is what you need to do. And so all of the letters that Paul writes are actually that. they a letter to a unique church yeah. about a unique situation and telling that church what they need to do to, to move forward. Mm. And I think that's how church leadership is. It has to be hearing the Lord and then applying what is the Lord saying to us, mm. never going beyond the bounds of Scripture. And we'd presumably also apply that on a personal level as yeah, saints. Yeah, very much. But That's then cool. as, as a leader, you're saying you need to apply that as 
for the whole church, Very for the much. congregation that you're leading. Yeah. Where is Jesus taking us right now? Totally. There's yeah. a sense that we're supposed to have one heart, one mind, one purpose. Right. Our purpose is supposed to be God's purpose. And the people need to know that our shepherds are following the great shepherd. Yes. And if they're following the great shepherd, they'll follow the shepherds. Mm. But if you're just taking people on your latest book that you read or your new idea, I think it's a very dangerous yeah. place to go. It's not your church. It's his yeah. church. And he's the head. And the body needs to stay connected to the head so that yeah. it operates properly mm. and goes where the head is wanting to yeah. go. I mean, I think my own experience, like as an elder, is that it, it is so easy to fall into programs mm. Uh, mm. and systems. Mm. Uh, why? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that the church gravitates towards programs and systems? I think it's still Adam's sin that works its way into us. You mm. know, again, Genesis three. Satan said, you will be like God. You will have the knowledge of good and evil. And so man's natural desire is to pick up ownership and, and control. And control, yeah. And, and we want to control it. If we control it, we think we're safe. But mm. God isn't looking for that. He's looking for faith. He's looking mm. for people that are, don't lean on their own understanding. They yeah. don't trust in their own strength. The Bible's full of, you know, the Lord doesn't delight in the strength of a horse or the legs of a man. Mm. He delights in those who fear him and put their trust mm. in his unfailing love. And so the scripture points us to seek God. And mm. one of the great tragedies of the Old Testament was God over and over going saying, my people are not seeking me. Yeah. They're making decisions yeah. that are not my mm. decisions. Mm. How much more so in the new covenant can we fall into that trap? So, and so we've got to yeah. actually take the time to depend on the Lord. And it mm. is harder because it's outside of our control. Yeah. But that's where God is mm. and that's where that's where the building really happens. Mm. Is it possible one manifestation of that maybe is what's been labeled sometimes the seeker sensitive, totally. where we actually package church totally. with a particular client in mind. Totally. And then, <laughs> totally. Like, and then sorry, spirit, we're not doing that. Exactly. Our you might freak some visitors like out. Yeah. yeah. And yet yeah. the scripture says if the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully among you in the yeah. Corinthians, you know, the yeah. Paul said to the Corinthians, uh, the unbeliever will fall in his face and go, truly God isn't right. with you. And now he's saved into a church where Jesus is alive mm, and yeah. moving and he's radically changed. Mm, when yeah. we dumb it down and try and make it the simple little, uh, you know, yeah. seeker friendly model, we actually don't present the gospel, which is a stumbling block to men. Yeah. But by the power of the gospel, that which yeah. causes us to stumble actually saves us mm, yeah. and we come to Christ. And so I think these are deep issues that touch on the very fabric and the nature yeah. of the kingdom of God. Mm. And we need to get this right or the church will, will fail as a hope as a light to the nations. Yeah. So like, what, what what do you think is at stake here, actually, if we don't get this right? I think everything's at stake. If the vehicle is the church that God chose to reveal his glory through to the angels and principalities mm. and powers, and the church fails, well, Jesus said, if the light in you is darkness, how terrible mm. would that be? You know? And yeah. if we lose the light of the king, if we are not, not in step with the spirit, if we aren't actually the sons of God who are led by the spirit of God, what do we have to give people? Yeah. Mm. There needs to be a connection to the intimate life of God. Mm. And Jesus said, remain in me and I'll remain mm. in you and you will be much fruit. Mm. People need to see Jesus in us. And that's only going to happen yeah. when leaders stay connected to him. Do you think that also has an impact on the presence of God being amongst us? Very you know? I mean, I can imagine a program driven church isn't going to invite the presence of God the way that just being mm. spirit led mm. would be. Very much. I mean, again, people might experience a goosebump in worship because it's that good. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's a difference between, wow, I was blown away by the worship or that preach blew my mind mm. versus the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And uh, in Revelation, again, in Revelation 3, Jesus writes to one of the churches and he says, I'm knocking. I want to come in. Yeah. If you hear my voice and if you open the door, mm. I'll come in and eat with you and you mm. with me. And so uh, we'll make our home to a with church. you. And was to a church. Yeah. Yeah. And so now Jesus is in that place. He's making his home. He's dwelling there. Mm. And where the Lord Lord is in that place where he's lifted up. He'll yeah. draw men. Actually, the churches that actually will grow the fastest are the churches where the presence of the Lord is. Pe sure. You know, what are we going to give that the world can't give people? Mm. All that we have is Jesus. And like Moses, yeah. if you don't go with us, how will the nations know? Yeah. So we need to get the church back to Jesus and leadership back around following Jesus, which mm. is one of my big passions, as you know. Yeah, I think uh, possibly a very pragmatic question is like in terms of uh, leadership in the church. So we would believe that uh, an eldership team would would be, you know, a, a, a team mm. for, start, for starters, mm. a team, mm. uh, not, not just one person. And then you'd have a, a lead elder on that team. So like in terms of what are the practical outworkings of a spirit led church in the team dynamic with the elders, starting with the elders? You know, I think firstly to realize that while we believe in plurality of elders, which is clear in the scriptures, yeah. there is always a leader within a plurality. 
Mm. Uh, in other words, mm. we're not all the same. Mm. Uh, within the Trinity, we see the Son and the Father are the same, but the Father takes the lead in Philippians 2, for example, in mm. all things. And so within every eldership team, there is a leader. And yeah. John uh, writes, or Jesus writes to the churches in the book of Revelation, to the messenger of the church in, or the agelos, which is messenger. And so he writes to a person who will lead the eldership team. Yeah. And we see this through the scriptures in, the, uh, in, in Acts when the church is discussing circumcision. Yeah. And there's a bit of disagreement about what, what is the way forward. And finally, after everyone has spoken, James says, this is yeah. my judgment. So there's definitely a person on the team, the lead mm. elder, the leading mm. elder that needs to hear the Lord and lead that team together forward. And the team's job is to work alongside him to make sure that he is here in the Lord, yeah. that he's not taking mm -hmm. us outside of the realms of scripture um, and that, or his own ego, and that he's actually leading the church in the Lord Jesus to the Lord Jesus yeah. as well. In that, is it possible that a new idea might come through one of the other elders in the team or would Definitely. it always be the lead Definitely. guy? Definitely. You know, I, you know uh, the end of the, the leader of the team has got to hear the Lord yeah. and he can hear the Lord through anyone right. or anything. Yeah. And so as leaders, certainly they should, we should all be waiting on the Lord and hey, Lord, what are you saying? And any one yeah. of us might share that into the, into the, the, the uh, an elder forum, yeah. but the elder, ultimately the leader has to feel this is the way. Yeah. Uh, and in Romans 12 verse eight, Paul speaking about the different gifts given. And one of them is if a man is, is, gift is leadership let him govern diligently and the word leadership is proistemi in the greek it literally means the one who is set over or right. at the head of or mm. and, and 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 so there's definitely a leader that will lead the church forward yeah. and he needs to do that diligently carefully yeah. making sure that the elders are with him and the church is able to follow him mm. so like what those elders that are on the team that are not leading the team what would you what would you say to them in terms of how can they um affirm and get behind and actually um, help the lead elder to be a man of the spirit mm. who is actually following the spirit mm. and, and what are some unhelpful things that they could do to mm. actually prevent him from doing that yeah you know i think firstly to realize that uh, again god has appointed a leader and again ideally we pray that in every one of the churches we're working with that the leader is a man of the spirit that yeah, understands these things sure. and he may be learning and growing that and there needs to be a grace that he's moving in the right direction if he is moving in the right direction <laughs> if he isn't moving in the right direction i honestly would say to guys get out of that church even if i'm leading a church that's mm. not in that get out of that church you want to be in a mm. spirit-led church you want mm. to be in a church that's going where jesus is going but where that leader is trying and failing because we all fall short of the glory of god there needs to be a, a graciousness given towards him but also a support it's hard to hear god eh? it's not mm, a yeah. exact science and uh, hear god with him pray with him uh support him sometimes realize that your perspective is a perspective um you know sometimes he might not agree with your perspective he's ultimately got to lead it where he's got faith uh and um and so you've got to work together as a team but at the same time realize that you are there to make sure that this church is being spirit led jesus yeah. led and so if you think he's missing the butt point you need to flag that to him if you think he's missing the Lord or going outside of Scripture. And and again, I think that's where apostles come in and the New Testament. Apostles come in as well at that point. So, yeah. so as soon as there's disagreement on the team, wisdom says the apostolic, you know, get hold of the apostles. Yeah. Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says about the matters you wrote about and he gives them perspectives. So there's times yeah. that the team will, you know, we, we, we're struggling to find unity here. If you can't find unity, I would say immediately you should stop. Mm. and go, okay, we need to get another perspective into this because we're not finding unity. Some think yeah. the Lord's saying left, some say right. What is the Lord saying? We can't really move forward in this lack of unity. Yeah. You can't wait for unity to happen because even in the book of Acts, the biggest decision in the whole life of the church is circumcision. <laughs> How are people yeah. going to get saved? And they can't find unity. Yeah. And so there's apostolic voices speaking and Paul speaks, Barnabas speaks, and then James says, this is my judgment. Mm. And once the apostolic is spoken and the leader picks the line, that's where the elders need to align themselves yeah. and yeah. they disagree and move forward in unity. And, and presumably there, there are issues that aren't salvation issues that are yeah. gray areas Perfect. where as a supporting elder, you can submit your that's own right. thoughts, that's but right. then just agree to follow. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Definitely. And there's, a, yeah, we, we to guard the unity of the spirit. Yeah. You know? So again, if you've got issues, speak about them and work them through in a yeah. godly way, but you've got to try and help this guy lead. Yeah. It's no good that you, that whenever he sees you, you've got some issue with what he's doing. Yeah. It's who wants that, you know, you, yeah. you've got to support him and let him know that you're with him, yeah. that you want him, you want this church to succeed and you recognize who he is in that yeah. church. And so together lead the church forward as a team. Yeah. Um, 
it's a more difficult way of leading a church, isn't it? It is. I, I mean, it would be much easier to have a mm. plan mm. for the next five years. Exactly. Uh, it would even seemingly make it easier as a team to be in unity. Exactly. If you, but I mean, if you've got the wild card, fa card mm. factor of the Holy Spirit mm. leading you places, which oftentimes you wouldn't have predicted, exactly. and now the team having to trust. Yeah. Um, I mean, I often laugh. I think it's crazy. I see guys that saying, you know, we're going to be going through this book for the next year of our lives. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, I get that God might tell you to do something, but I, I think I know how to hear the Lord quite well, but I can't tell you what he's going to say to me in a year's time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that, you know, how does he break in once we've set our course? For me, uh, there's we've got to be realistic with what he's saying to us. We might have some broad pictures of what we, you know, he's kind of, this, these are things we need to be working on. But yeah. at the same time, there's that sense of every letter written by Paul, which we would believe were written by the Spirit mm. to a local church, is yeah. dealing with specific issues for now. And as you deal with those issues, a whole lot of new issues will, will come up and you've got to deal with those issues then. So there's got to be that sense of yeah. as the Spirit leads us. Mm. We keep, In fact, the Bible says keep in step yeah. with the Spirit in the yeah. book of Galatians. In, in so. terms of that, like planning ahead, because obviously church teams, leaders, need, and mm. particularly these days, I think there's an increased pressure because of the media that we use mm. and often preachers are teaching with projection mm. behind mm. them or there's posters going out mm. and, and so there is a sense of there's a pressure that comes from the trappings of church life yeah. that pushes us towards being prepared in advance. Mm. But um, I, what I'm hearing is not that you're saying we would never have a series of no. sermons, yeah. but but that you need to really be in step with the Spirit yeah. if you were going to choose that yeah. and that the Holy Spirit could break yeah. in at any point. And again, I mean, I remember once when I didn't realize this, I did a series on Genesis. Mm. I think I was three months in Genesis 1 verse 1. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can break this down deeper and deeper and deeper, you know. Yeah. How long are we going to go through this thing? Yeah. Uh, so I and, remember it was called Origins. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so you, you realize, no, you, God's got to be able to break in at any moment, at any yeah. time. And while we might yeah. have a sense that there's a weak muscle in the church that the Lord is speaking to us about, maybe it's prayer and we go through a series yeah. where we break something open, you know, using the scriptures mm. clearly on these things. It's it's when how long does it take to teach a church to pray? How right. do you know? They could respond first message. Now you yeah. spent yeah. the next six months building on that. Maybe they haven't done six months. Then you've got to keep building that muscle. Yeah. It's like a child and you've got to mm. lead yeah. her as an individual. Mm. And yeah. individuals don't work with systems and programs. You know, you don't yeah. bring up your child with, okay, we're gonna go through the next eight months of, you know, some kind of course on you yeah. deal with your child as your child is life. Mm. And mm. I think Jesus deals with his church exactly the same way and as mm. leaders yeah. we've got to hear that. I'm even thinking of like what's happening recently in our own church with the charismatic liturgy, which you've mm. referred to. Mm. I mean, mm. we wouldn't even say we have a liturgy, mm. but maybe you can speak a little bit about that. How how how, how is it that even charismatic churches, which yeah. pride themselves yeah. in being spirit led, yeah. can somehow fall into a liturgy? Yeah. You know, <laughs> again, the worst case scenario we've never done this is some churches will have the whole program. Normally, churches yeah. go for an hour. It's programmed to the hilt, and I yeah. think I don't think Jesus is a chance to get in there. Mm. I think those things are just program driven churches. But even with us, where we've tried to be spirit led, we're lazy and we tend to start in the spirit and yeah. regulations shift to the flesh. You yeah. know, our own strength and ability, and so you end up. I find very often our leaders have drifted to just trusting in our systems, trusting yeah. in that you know our, 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 the way our, our meetings are going to run, and they're no longer waiting on the Lord, saying, "Lord, where do you want to go?" They start to depend too much upon the systems that have mm. brought us this far. But the Bible says, "It brought us this far is not enough to take us further." Mm. And I think it's that place where we've got to be going, "Lord, what are you saying?" Yeah. And we're going to do whatever you want to do. And and so you could break in, and if you're not breaking in ever. I've got to wonder, is he actually leading? Yeah. And so it it the, the elder's place is to be waiting on the Lord in prayer yeah. and in the word. That's what the Bible says. The apostle said in the early church, wait on the Lord in prayer and in the word. If you're not waiting on the Lord and hearing what he says, mm. you're in danger of leading Israel, the church, where God hasn't spoken, mm -hmm. and it's an indictment against you. So practically there, are you saying there could be a Sunday where you know, we have all our Com components, the units that make up what we think is a church service, mm. but maybe some of those units might be missing one Sunday because the spirit just didn't get to that totally. point totally. with us. I think even our little program that we have, you know, who says worship has to go that long? Who says, right. you, know, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's family. And imagine every time you got together as family, you did exactly the same thing the same yeah. way. I think maybe the church on Sunday should pray. Maybe yeah. on Sunday we should 
just break bread. Maybe on Sunday we should just worship. Maybe on mm. Sunday we mm. should just preach. Uh, it's it's what is needed for now. What is God doing? Yeah. I mean, Paul meets as one of the churches and he preaches right through the night. Would that yeah. happen today? You know, <laughs> would people even let? There's yeah. no way. You, know, you can't go more than an hour. And I think we've yeah, lost. I've got babysitters. We've lost what the to, church yeah. is about totally. Yeah. And we've got to come back to the New Testament, mm. back to building mm. God's way. So one of the very, very practical questions is now, uh, on a Sunday morning, you know, when we speak about being spirit led, oftentimes the prophetic comes into that, mm. you know, um, there's obviously hearing this, the spirit for yourself, but then you get people bringing prophetic words, which to some extent bring direction to where you're going as a church. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you handle that practically with, you know, maybe you've got four or five people on a particular Sunday morning mm. tapping you on the shoulder mm. with a prophetic word. How, how do Great you deal question. with that? I mean, when the Lord starts to really show up in our meetings, and there are times that he shows up more than others, even in the Old Testament, you know, there's that sense of people suddenly are hearing him for themselves. And so normally the greater the presence of the Lord, the more the string of prophecy comes because people <laughs> yeah. are hearing him. They're, he's there, he's speaking to the church, yeah. and people are starting to hear it. Mm. And so everyone's kind of awakens. I feel the Lord saying this, I feel the Lord saying that. And so there's this excitement, which is a wonderful thing. The danger is that everyone is now hearing the Lord for themselves or picking up what he's already doing because mm. they're sensitive. And so they come to the leader and they're like, I feel like I've got something for the church. And the leader there's got to distinguish between those that are actually going to lead the church into the next thing. What's mm. the, yeah. Is this where we're going? Or is this celebrating what's just happened? And I think sometimes... The, the ability to actually, and always it's just someone that the Lord's speaking to that person. You know, mm. the Lord can speak to us individually. Yeah. He can be in a room and he speaks to Thomas differently to how he speaks to Peter. Totally. Um, and so uh, the leader's got to discern there what actually is going on here. Is this a word for us moving us forward? Is this just mm. a word of confirmation? Is this a yeah. word for the person? Yeah. And then lead the church effectively, maybe not letting everyone share, but leading the guys mm. forward that we'd need to lead. The, like in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul effectively sets quotas yeah. for the amount of tongues. Right. Amount, is right. that something you'd want to do in terms of actual numbers or is it more a heart thing that you want to have a sense of order? I, I think it's order. You know, I think yeah. the Paul says let one speak and the other stay silent. I think they were all at the same time just going moggy and just, yeah. you know, everyone's <laughs> speaking. It's like, whoa, slow this down. Let's get some yeah. sense of order and communication, clearly direction out of this. Because yeah. prophecy should ultimately help us point the church where the Lord is going. Yeah. So I, I think in that there's a sense, again, the leader has to hear the Lord. And if someone shares a word with me, I am the leader. I'm trusting that I'm going to hear the Lord myself in what they say. Yeah. Mm. And yes. so if I don't witness with it, I've tended to just to say, Lord, I'm, I'm not hearing what Luke is hearing right now. If that's what you're saying, please would you confirm it? And then invariably no one does or Adam comes up and he shares mm. the same thing and I'm going, okay, Lord, I think he's yeah. speaking to us right now. And then I'll let Luke mm. share and then steer the church in that direction because yeah. the Lord is leading us forward mm. and yeah. I'm trying my best to hear him with the rest of the believers yeah. in the church. Is that is that something that you would often do? Like if you're not sure then ask God, would you mind confirming that uh, through I someone else? I do that all the time. You know? okay. Sometimes a person comes and as they open their mouth, I sense God's just on know. them and I know. Sometimes I'm like, mm. sometimes I know it's not God. It's like, I know that it's just something for them. Mm. Um, but if I'm not sure, I'm just, Lord, you said, mm. I'd hear a voice that this is the way I walk in it when you mm. said you'd send the spirit. I need your voice right now. I need to hear where you're going. Yeah. And he speaks, you know, he says, if you lack wisdom, ask. And he's mm. faithful. He'll, he'll send the spirit. He'll give the spirit if you ask. And he is very faithful. It's his church. He loves it, man. And he always speaks if you give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah. That's very helpful. We, we probably have to cl uh, start closing soon, but um, maybe you could just share just like in your experience, and you've had a lot of experience going into lots of different kinds mm. of churches, uh, just a few closing thoughts and maybe just encouragements for the, for the people that are listening to this, mm. that maybe this could be quite a different, possibly challenging, possibly scary uh, transition mm. that they're needing to take mm. their church through. It is scary, you know. I think to move away from something else towards the Lord is terrifying. But maybe just to remember, Abraham has to leave his father's house not knowing mm. where he's going. Mm. Yeah. And he's a father of all who believe. And I think it could be said of all that are led by the Spirit. Jesus said, they like the wind. No one knows where it's coming or where it's going. Mm. But when he's blowing, you mm. know, he's moving. And I think we've got to come to that place where we start little by little to move towards being 
spirit-led churches, yeah. that Jesus is building the church through us and that the people have a sense that we are going somewhere together on a journey. Jesus is taking us and we're following Paul, we're following Luke or Adam mm. as mm. they follow Christ. And yeah. that gives us security because we know Jesus is the head of the mm. church. Mm. He is the governor. He is the leader. He's the senior pastor. And all these others are just following behind him and we're with them, trying to hear the voice of the shepherd saying, this is the way yeah. we walk in it. So we need to go for this. And if we make a mistake, I think the Lord is very gracious. Mm. Go for it, and the Lord will be there to pick you up and uh, and honor. I think faith. Mm. Cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, for coming thank in and guys. sharing these uh, mm. wisdom with us. I think uh, it's going to be a hopefully it'll be a real blessing to those who are yeah, listening to this online so. or wherever churches they're Just get it, man. Yeah, we need to see churches built by Jesus. Yeah. Cool. We want too much man-made stuff. Until next time. All thanks right. so much. Cheers. Man. Cheers. Cheers.